We are now just a few weeks away from Euro 2024, and I am getting excited. So I figured now would be a good time to completely expose my ball knowledge and do a prediction of how this tournament is going to end up. So in this video, I'm going to pull up my entire bracket prediction, talk about who I think is going to win each group and who I think is going to win the entire thing at the end. And please, at the end of the video, if you agree or disagree, leave your predictions in the comments below. So without further ado, let's get straight into the bracket. So to kick things off, we've got Group A with host nation Germany. And I gotta say, this really shouldn't be too much of a surprise to too many people, but I gotta put Germany at number one. They're obviously gonna have a lot of motivation, a lot of pride being the host and country. And beyond that, they've also got Julian Nagelsmann at the helm, who I think is probably the best coach in this entire tournament. He absolutely tore it up with Bayern Munich. I'm really surprised they let him go. And not only that, but international managers usually aren't as good as the cream of the crop club managers in Europe. And I just think that he's going to be better tactically than most other managers, not just in this group, but in this entire tournament. Beyond that, they've got so many great young players. They've got Musiala, they've got Wurtz, who are two of the best attacking players in the world, and they're both like 20 years old. They've also got Kai Havertz, who I think has been coming good at Arsenal recently, and they've also got some experienced players. They've got Tony Cruz, who's probably going to have his last tournament for Germany in this Euros. They've got Tony Rudiger. They've got Gundogan. They've got a great balance of young players, old players, and to top it off, they've got a great manager. So I think they're going to get first in their group. I'd be shocked if they got anything less. It'd be a huge upset. Beyond that, I'm actually going to go with Hungary for second, which is a little bit surprising considering the other groups here, but they've had a pretty strong qualifying campaign. They also have some good players, Dominic Sabaslai for one. And other than that, their team may seem kind of scattered. They've got some players who are in the MLS, some players in second divisions of Europe. But as a team, they've actually been playing pretty well, as I mentioned, in the qualifying rounds. And I think that they might get an upset over Switzerland, who technically, you could argue, has better players. But I just think Hungary's been more impressive in the last few games. And unfortunately, that means I think Scotland, my beloved homeland, is going to finish in fourth place. Um, but there's always a potential for upset. I actually think Group A is a decently strong group compared to some of the other teams in this tournament. Next up, we got Group B, who I think is the group of death in this tournament. You've got Spain, Croatia, Italy, and Albania. And this was a really tough group to put together. I kind of went back and forth on my first, second, and third. But at the end of the day, I think Spain is going to get it done. They've performed pretty consistently in international tournaments. That being said, they haven't really reached the same highs that we saw in that 2010 Spain team that was one of the best international teams we've ever ever seen um but that being said they're still a great possession based squad they're pretty solid defensively i still think they're really lacking an out and out goal scorer they've got alvaro morata they've got danny olmo who can pick up some goals here and there but they've also got some cool young talent coming through they've got nico williams they've got lamin yamal and they've also got a huge anchor in the midfield in rodri he's i think one of the best defensive midfielders in the world if not the best defensive midfielder so i think between their possession their defense and some counter attacks they have going down the wing i think pound for pound player for player they're just better than the other teams in this group and i think they should be able to get it done that being said, second and third was really close between Croatia and Italy, but I have to give it to Croatia. They've just generally been a really strong presence in international tournaments. They've been very consistent. Obviously, they made the uh, World Cup final not long ago. And Italy, on the other hand, while they're technically the reigning European champions, they failed to qualify for the World Cup since then, and they just haven't really been performing ever since their Euro win. So I think they'll be okay in this tournament. I think they'll get third, and I think that'll be enough to get them into the knockout rounds, but I don't think that they're going to finish first or second in this group, and that unfortunately means for Albania, they're going to finish fourth. Next up, we got Group C, which I think is maybe one of the slightly weaker groups in the tournament. Also, I'm not really sure, but it feels like England gets grouped with some of these same teams almost every single tournament. I swear I've seen them with Denmark and Serbia before in the past. But I do think they're going to have enough talent on their team to get it over the line and get in first place here. I mean, player for player, similar to Spain, Germany, some of the other heavyweights, the talent in the England squad can't be denied. I mean, just looking at the squad here, I mean, Bellingham, 
Kane, Foden, Cole Palmer, Bakayo Saka, Declan Rice, even though their manager and Gareth Southgate, I don't think he's as tactically strong as some of the other managers here. Just fielding those players alone should be enough to get them first in this group. Honestly, I think I could guest manage one of these group stage games and get at least the draw. I mean, that's how good the players are on this England team. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to overhype them. I don't necessarily think they're the best team in the tournament, but the talent they have in the squad is definitely undeniable. Beyond that, I think Denmark is going to be capable of getting second here. Similar to Croatia, they've been another consistent performer in tournaments. Most of their players play in first division European sides, um, so I think that'll be enough to bring them over the line. Between Serbia and Slovenia, honestly, I was kind of split. I went Serbia third and Slovenia fourth. Next up, we got Group D with the Netherlands, France, Poland, and Austria. So this group is probably medium to slightly stronger. Netherlands, France, obviously two pretty strong teams, and I think you could argue that France is still going to be the favorites to win it all. Some reports have been coming out saying that England's on top, but I mean, we saw what happened when France and England played in the World Cup. I mean, France, they're just the more clutch team. They just get it done when they need to. And I still think that they're going to come out first in this group. I mean, the talent in the French squad is unreal. Mbappe, Kamavinga, Chouameni, Griezmann, Dembele. It's honestly insane how deep they are. Also, I mean, Saliba in defense, and I don't even think he's first choice, which is just ridiculous. It goes to show the depth they have in almost every position on the field is kind of stunning. I think if you're just looking at depth, France would easily have one of the strongest teams in the entire tournament. Um, after them, I think it's going to be Netherlands, who kind of have a sneaky strong team. I think a lot of people kind of look past Netherlands because they're not as strong as they used to be. You know, we're no longer in the Wesley Schneider, Robin Van Persie days. But I mean, they've got some good young players, Xavi Simmons, Nathan Ake, Cody Gakpo. And all of those offensive young players are sitting in front of a back line that has Virgil van Dijk. I mean, that's pretty scary. We saw that they, I mean, easily dismantled the United States in the World Cup. Granted, the U.S. aren't that strong. But, I mean, Netherlands could be a dark horse in this tournament. I wouldn't be surprised if some people have them going as far as quarterfinals, maybe even semifinals. After that, I was kind of split between Poland and Austria. But ultimately, I think maybe a, a few good appearances from Lewandowski is going to be enough to get Poland into a strong third-place finish and then Austria in fourth. Group E, we've got an interesting one with Ukraine, Slovakia, Belgium, and Romania. So you would typically say in previous years that Belgium would be the clear favorite to win this one, and I still think they will, but it's not going to be as convincing as years past because Belgium's golden generation has pretty much left us. There's no more Eden Hazard. You could say Kevin De Bruyne is maybe starting to wind down slightly towards the final years in his career. Same with Romelu Lukaku. But I also think that those players will probably be wanting to make a statement in this tournament. So I expect, you know, Lukaku, De Bruyne, they're going to be wanting to put this tournament and this team on their back and get as far as they can. But keep in mind, Belgium have a few young players that I think will want to make a difference in this tournament. They've got Jeremy Doku, they've got Yuri Thielmans. So it isn't just an old generation of stars that are walking out the door. They've got some young talent as well. They've got new management. They're no longer under Roberto Martinez. So I think there's some potential for the squad. I'm really interested to see how far they go. And then after them, kind of a wild card as to who could finish second in this group. I think people will pick different teams for different reasons, but I got to go for Ukraine. Partially because I really want to see what Mikhailo Mudrik might be able to do at the international level for his team. Ukraine also have a few other players like Myalenko. They also have Zinchenko from Arsenal. And... I've seen them play a couple games at the international level. They've picked up some decent results. They've drawn against Germany and Italy within the past six months, which is pretty impressive considering how strong and deep those other teams are. So I think they might have enough to maybe get some points against Slovakia, against Romania, maybe even sneak a draw against Belgium. I'm going to have them in second, then I'm going to have Slovakia, followed by Romania, in fourth. And then finally, we got Group F, which is kind of a similar situation to Group E, where it feels like the first place team almost picks itself in Portugal. 
who also have such a strong squad, so many attacking players, so many creative players are on Portugal. They got Bruno Fernandes, Bernardo Silva, Rafael Leal, and on top of that, they got some good defenders as well. Ruben Diaz at center back is always going to be hard to get past. And I think that they have a pretty well-balanced team overall, you know, strong midfield, strong wingers. And there's pretty much no team in this group that I think could realistically challenge them for that first place spot. I would be shocked if a team like Georgia, Czech Republic, or Turkey could take that first place spot off of Portugal. So I'm going to have them at one. Second, it's kind of a free-for-all, and I kind of wanted to go for the underdog here. I got to go for Georgia. I mean, I haven't seen Napoli play that much, but the highlights and some of the scenes I've seen from um, Kvaricella have been amazing. And I don't know if you guys have seen some of the other names on that Georgia team, but I just want to see commentators try and pronounce every player that they have. So the further they get in the tournament, the better. Um, So beyond that, Turkey, you could argue their favorite to finish second, but their run of form hasn't been amazing in the qualifiers. I'm going to put them at third and then Czech Republic at fourth. And then as far as the best third place teams after the group stage has been completed, I'm pretty much going to go with the first four that you see here. I think they're going to get just enough points through maybe a win or some draws to just scrape through to the knockout round. So that's going to be Switzerland, Italy, Serbia, and Poland, which means Slovakia and Turkey will also be knocked out. Now, moving on to the round of 16, we got Spain versus Switzerland. I think Spain is going to come away victorious in that one. Next up, we got Germany versus Denmark. No crazy upsets yet. Going to go with Germany in that one as well. Next, we got Portugal and Serbia. Going to go with Portugal on that one. Then Netherlands and Ukraine. I think Netherlands, the dark horse of the tournament, are going to win that one as well. Next up, we got an interesting matchup with Belgium and Italy. I still think that Italy are going to be struggling a little bit, but I think ultimately they're going to have a little bit more to play for considering that they were the previous champions of this tournament. I feel they're going to be really motivated to get far in this Euro competition as well, and I just don't know if Belgium is still going to have that superstar power that they had from a few years ago. So I think it'll be a close game, but I think Italy will just eke out the result there. Next, we've got France versus Georgia. I'd love an underdog story, but let's be realistic. I think France is going to come away with the win there. Then we got England versus Poland. I think England's going to win that one. And then Hungary versus Croatia. I think that's going to be a great game, but I think Hungary is going to get an upset on this one. Definitely going to be an underdog story in that matchup, but I think they're going to get the win. Now, quarterfinals, this is where it gets really tough to pick these outcomes because all the teams that are left are going to be really strong. Spain versus Germany. Obviously, I think Spain is going to keep most of the possession throughout the game, but I feel like Germany has more offensive firepower and surprisingly a little bit more creativity at the front compared to Spain. I just think that their personnel are going to get them the win in this game. I think Spain is going to play well, but I just don't know if they have enough goals in them to beat Germany. And for that, I'm going to have Germany advance there. Portugal versus Netherlands. This is so hard to call because... I honestly think Netherlands might have a better overall style of play. I think they're maybe slightly more well-balanced as a team as well. But I think it's going to be close. Probably Portugal on penalties for that one. But it's going to be really, really close. Next up, we got Italy and France. Italy, well, I think they're good enough to make it to the knockout stages. They just don't have a team that's on the level of the French. And for that... I think France is going to go through. Could be close, but France is just too strong. And then England versus Hungary. I think this is where Hungary's dark horse path is going to end. I think England will just be able to get the win. Now we're going into the semifinals of the tournament. And God, this is a matchup I really do want to see. Germany versus Portugal. I think these are two of the teams with some of the most creativity, some of the most offensive firepower. I mean, Germany, you're going to have Jamal Musiala. You're going to have Furian Wirtz. And then Portugal is going to have Bruno Fernandes, Bernardo Silva. I mean, there's so many different ways this game can go. I think both teams are actually pretty strong defensively as well. I think Portugal has gotten stronger defensively than they've been in previous tournaments. So I don't actually see it being a really high scoring game. Could just be a 1-0, could be a 2-1. But I think Germany, 
maybe just because they have that host nation confidence behind them, I think that they're going to pick up the win and I think they're going to get all the way into the final. Next up, England versus France. This is the rematch of the game that they played in the World Cup where France went through off of a beautiful Chuameni goal from outside of the box. Harry Kane obviously missed a crucial penalty that could have tied the game up and gave England a chance of going through. And this is, I think, going to be a pretty close game too. I would say that France are the favorites if they come up against England, despite the fact that England still have really good personnel. But I actually think that England might upset France if they come together in a semifinal here and get the win. And I don't think it's going to be because Gareth Southgate puts on a tactical masterclass, but I think he'll be just smart enough to figure out what players he needs to put in what position. I think if he has a midfield pivot of someone like Declan Rice and maybe Kobe Mayno, or potentially Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham if he pulls him back into that defensive midfield area, they're just going to have too many weapons throughout all points in the field. They have so much creativity with the players they have. They have players that can be strong centrally. They have players that can offer width like Anthony Gordon, Bakayo Saka. And honestly, they have the best striker in this entire tournament, whether you like Harry Kane or not. And I think they have just enough solid defenders to plug up any holes they have in the back. And I'd be really impressed if England could just find the mental strength and fortitude to overcome France, because France have kind of had England's number for a while. And I think this game is just going to be a little bit more mental than it is technical, because both of these teams have great players. They have some of the best players in the entire tournament. But I just think that England, those players, they're going to feel a little bit more passionate about getting a result in this game just because of the loss they suffered to France in the World Cup. So I'm going to go with England to make it to a second successive Euro final. And that means we would have a Euro 2024 final of Germany versus in England, which would also be a rematch of the 1966 World Cup final between West Germany and England, which obviously England ended up winning. And now these two teams have had a rivalry, not just since 1966, but even before then, England versus Germany has always been a great match. And in recent years, England has actually fared pretty well in that matchup. There was obviously the 2010 World Cup where Germany defeated England. I remember that Frank Lampard shot coming off the crossbar, bouncing into the goal, then bouncing 20 feet out. God, that was such a frustrating game to watch live. But then in recent tournaments, England's actually defeated Germany and been slightly the better team. Germany has gone through kind of a manager crisis within the last three years as well. But now that they have Nagelsmann, they're hosting the tournament. And they have so many great young players that we've talked about, like Musiala, like Wurtz. I actually think that Germany is going to have the upper hand coming into this game. Even though England will be the money line favorites, they'll be the betting favorites if they ever come up against Germany in this tournament. But I actually think that Germany is going to win Euro 2024. I just think they have too many factors that are in their favor. They've got the best coach in the tournament. They've got some of the best young players in the tournament. They have a very well-balanced squad. And on top of all of that, they're hosting the games. I think the whole tournament is going to feature some really close games. It's also going to feature some upsets. And as much as I would love to see England lift the trophy as an England fan, I think Germany is going to have enough to get it done. And that is going to do it for this video. Please let me know in the comments below, who do you think is going to win Euro 2024? Do you have any dark horses that you think are going to get really far in this tournament? Who do you think is getting slept on right now? And who do you think might get upset early on? Thank you guys so much for watching. Like if you've enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.